type of um, consistency. I am thinking that did not work. Good morning, everyone. Except for guess what? It's actually not morning. It's actually very late in the night because we are doing a special vlog for you guys today. I am partnering with Sugar Cookies by Stella. Hey guys. And you guys, we are gonna show you how to do sugar cookies. We've done this once before. It went over very well. Those were Valentine's cookies, but we need Christmas cookies. It's time. It's time. It's time for Christmas. Christmas is upon us. <laughs> Stephanie is going to show us the entire process of making sugar cookies. Ooh, I think that's what we're doing. Stephanie is gonna show us exactly how she makes these, exactly what goes into them. She's going to clarify a few things because we were just discussing the questions that people always have. Some questions that people always say, how many cookies does it make? What kind of butter is it? What do they say? Salt. I get asked if it's salted or unsalted. I always get asked if it's a typo that there's four teaspoons of baking powder. It is not a typo. <laughs> um, so, what else do we get asked? Um, Should we just answer them? Just answer the whole thing. Answer all of them. Okay, so how many cookies does it make? I think it makes Three to four dozen, depending on the size. Depending on the size, you guys, because she makes yeah. these cute little teeny, if tiny, you ones. tiny ones. You could get sixty, but yes. I mean, if they're like average, three to four dozen, it probably four dozen. Well, it's pretty generous. That That's is, quite a bit. Yeah, it makes about four dozen. Yeah, salted or unsalted? Salted. Salted. Okay. Salted butter. Is it a typo to put four teaspoons of baking <laughs> it is powder? Not a typo. There's four <laughs> teaspoons of baking powder. I don't know. It's not my fault. <laughs> Where did you get this recipe? I want to know. Um, that. the story behind this is that my dad had it as a child and it was this thing is ancient oh, is so just kidding old. Johnny it's really <laughs> so my dad grew up doing this recipe with his mom and they got it from a neighbor lady oh and some neighbor lady in Utah oh <laughs> so some neighbor lady it's from the neighbor lady yeah I have posted this recipe on this is how we bingham.com on our blog but I think I'm going to do a revised yeah, recipe with the details of salted butter and and how many, many it makes <laughs> so we're gonna get started Steph is gonna show us how she makes this recipe it's really Really easy, although I've never done it. It's super easy. Okay. We need a cup of salted butter. Softened, I usually just put it out the night before. So if I'm making cookies the next day, put it out the night before. Room temperature, it's a little bit colder in the winter than when you wake up in the summer, but. And this is a Bosch mixer. I have a standard KitchenAid. I was wondering when Bosch, I came here the first time, I was like, guys, what are you using? Team Bosch, not Team KitchenAid. KitchenAid. I know. But once you've had a Bosch mixer, you would never go back to KitchenAid. It just looks like an saying. old machine. They're known to make bread, but I've never made bread. We make cookies here. We make cookies. So after room temperature softened butter. Salted. Salted. <laughs> One and a half cups of sugar. Wow. One teaspoon of vanilla. I don't want more dishes, so I just use the cap. Good. Because nobody wants more dishes. Why would I want to do dishes? We're gonna mix this first, and then we'll add the eggs. <laughs> gonna scrape the side, make sure it mixes really well. I'm gonna mix the dry ingredients separately and then we're gonna add them in there. We have four cups of flour. I do get asked what kind of flour. It's just flour, regular. It's just white flour? Like yeah, it's just regular flour. It's not cake flour or anything, it's nothing special. Okay, and then I do a half a teaspoon, so not the whole thing. But again, I don't want more dishes. I want you to want to do the dishes. I'm using the same one. Half a teaspoon of salt and then four teaspoons of baking powder. We'll mix all of our dry ingredients together, make sure that they're evenly mixed. We'll add it to this stuff. All at one time? Yeah. Oh, you mix, okay, wow, all in. You're going all in. All in, Mindy. Look okay. at her trick, guys. This is my trick, so then I take my bowl, because I don't want flour everywhere. <laughs> comes into a super nice dough. Okay, now it's ready. It's ready. So now she has got it all mixed. She's going to put it on this awesome silicone yeah, uh, mat. This stuff's awesome. Okay, now what are you putting down? This is flour, more flour so it doesn't stick. I think I have been asked how thin or thick I do them. That is like really hard for me. I've never really measured it, but it's probably somewhere between an eighth and a fourth, so it's not very helpful. They're just perfect. It's they honestly, she's been doing it for out. so long, she just knows what to do. <laughs> Look at all of these tricks though. Remember the first time I watched Stephanie do this, I was just shocked that she like beats the crap out of her dough. <laughs> yes, if you're angry, you're like, oh. Remember when we were talking about Grey's Anatomy once and I was like, stupid. That was really bad. 
<laughs> so you guys can see out how thick she has it. It's not crazy thick, it's just perfect, honestly. And she uses a really great silicone. Yeah, this is actually Wilton. Oh wow, it's a great silicone rolling pin. Yeah, any craft store would have it. Are we ready to? Mindy should do the. I'll do that. Yeah, do it. Let's do like six of each so we can have enough to practice on. My wanna, favorite square. I want to be a rebel and do the bumpy side. I know, it's cute, but only if you're going to a baby shower or something. Wow, look how perfectly it fit. We did the right amount oh, of man. stuff. Everything she uses is like silicone. She pats everything in the flower, and she's putting these very close together, and you guys will notice she's using parchment paper, and I think the parchment paper goes in this drawer. Look, okay, we should show everybody your Actually, drawers. Actually, people do ask me where I get that all the time. So this is from Orson Gigi, yeah. and she buys it, but it's not. I cut like a half an she inch. She cuts like a half of an inch. We saw her do that in the last because video. The Manufacturers of this don't match this and I think they need to be friends. They don't play well don't together Anyway, she uses this parchment paper puts it down that way I think the bottom of her cookies are never browned. They're always no, just perfectly cooked Hey they are all ready, and you guys are gonna notice they are gonna stay true to their shape. Yeah, they don't spread very much. They I'm really not don't. Sure why. I've been so surprised. I'm gonna make Let's these for my. This. We're gonna do these on Christmas Eve. We're gonna let the kids do it. Okay, look, you guys, double ovens. I need to get one of these. How long do you cook them? Oh, nine minutes, three fifty for nine minutes. However, at my old house, it was eight minutes. So when I give out the recipe, I tend to just say three fifty for eight to ten minutes because I really think it's gonna depend on your oven. And I don't even know if this is really a thing or if I'm just making it up in my head, but I have seen, because we live in Utah, we're kind of at a little bit higher altitude, that can also affect your cooking. So it's gonna depend on every single oven. So yeah, I think that they raise, but they don't necessarily spread like some people's No, they cookies. don't they lose so their shape. Yeah. Oh, I forget we have two going on here. Yes. And our little squares. These are gonna be so cute. These are gonna be Santa's, obviously snowflakes and Christmas trees. We are now going to make the frost. Stephanie has like a really awesome method to this. A what? You have a really awesome method because oh, I, don't, yeah, yeah. I don't see what I was looking for, but where's your squirt bottle? Oh yeah, that's for later. Oh, okay, we do that later. Right there. Oh, uh, oh it's, in, it's in there, okay. These are two pound bags, by the way. The recipe calls for four pounds, so that's, it sounds like a lot, but it's really not. Powdered sugar, once it gets mixed with something, oh, it yeah, just it gets, gets a lot smaller. Yes. So two bags of this. The next step, which is probably the oh, most. Whoa. <laughs> I use Wilton Marine powder because I've tried other stuff and it does not work. It did not harden the icing like I wanted it to so I stuck with Wilton even though it's pretty pricey but it works so well. This recipe calls for three fourths a cup. I have had people ask me what if I want to half this recipe and just use one bag of powdered sugar and they're like how do you half three fourths a cup? I take this and I just fill it up halfway. So is this a three fourths this cup? This is okay. a three fourths. If you want to half this recipe just fill it up halfway. Are we making a full recipe? So we're gonna make a full okay. one. Yeah. You also need, it's somewhere between a third and a half. I mean, it's like one and a half, one and third, somewhere around there. Is the water room temperature cold? What is it? I mean, I think warm would be best. And we'll do two tablespoons of vanilla or any flavoring. I mean, I do vanilla, but a lot of people like almond. Almond would or, be good. Yeah, so any any flavoring you want. Now we have to mix it. I broke my hand mixer because, oh. well, I break them about every two to three months. R seriously? I, do. I have to buy a new one every two to three months. Because this frosting's thick and I'm making these multiple times a week. And so I'm not saying I'm gonna break Mindy's because it won't happen in one I could use a new one. I've one had night. the same one since I was, since I got married. Are you serious? Yes, I don't so use it So I buy a new one like every two to three months because they just break. I mean, I wonder if it's because I was buying the $20 ones, then I bought a nicer one and it still broke, so. Oh, okay, well buy the crappy ones. Yeah. Here is my one crappy one that still has everything in it because I don't use it that much. Look, and you have all the different wow. options for mixing. Let's do it. So what I'll tend to do is kind of get that meringue powder mixed in a little bit before I actually turn on the beaters. I just like to kind of get it mixed, you know, together. Then we've got our water mixed with vanilla. Well, you just go all in right all away. All in. I'm curious to see if she breaks it. It's not gonna break <laughs> after one. So now 
comes the part that Stephanie is so amazing at and she's gonna try and help me again to do it. You know, with every different cookie design that she does, it's like a new art. She is going to now show us how she mixes all of her frosting. So the meringue powder is what makes the frosting set up. So she's covered it in a wet paper towel until we're ready to use it. Okay, so what I usually do is, actually I was gonna say, what you wanna remember is to mix this until it's about the consistency. Well, it says to mix it till it's stiff, but I think that's good enough for today. We're gonna start with white because we're gonna need a fair amount of white for what we're doing. This consistency for piping, what you want it to be is similar to toothpaste. Just kind of a soft but stay stiff type of consistency. What we're gonna do is mix colors, put them in the saran wrap, and those are gonna go into the piping bags, and we'll show exactly how I do that later. But for now, we need some white. I don't even need to thin it out. I think it's gonna be pretty good consistency. And you take it and you put it right in the middle of that square of saran wrap, fold corner to corner, and then just kind of twist it up and we will let it sit while we do with some others. So we're gonna need to do some white. What we'll do with each of these is we'll probably be needing like an edge and then a fill icing. So a piping and a fill. So the piping obviously is this consistency where it will keep its shape and then a fill icing will be really thin. So we'll pipe around that edge and then fill into the middle. Now she has put some new white. So here's the first white. This is white we're gonna turn into a color. No, this no, is gonna be the fill. the fill. Okay, yeah, so the fill. What we do is I use a spray bottle so that we don't get too much water at a time and so you can work with the consistency and make it the exact consistency that you want. If you were to just walk over to your sink and put some water in here, you're most likely gonna get too much. So it adds it nice and slow. It adds it really slow. You can really like decide how much you need. She's gonna go back for more. Okay, your arm has to die after all of these. I do have like blisters on my hands. Oh my <laughs> gosh. They're good now, but it's at calluses. first I did. They're calluses now. As you're doing this, what is the consistency you want of the fill icing. Yeah, I think we're getting to that point. So the fill icing needs to be the consistency of like probably shampoo. So it will fall right off the cookie without an edge. It's very runny, but not too runny. I mean, it's it falls right off the spoon. So what we're gonna do is put it into these bottles. But a lot of the time I like to tap it on the counter to get the air bubbles to make it to the top because we don't want air bubbles in the cookies. You guys, everything that Stephanie uses has a silicone bottom. I noticed that about this little bowl she used. This one has a silicone bottom. She uses the silicone spatulas. Everything she uses is that soft silicone. Tell us what kind of coloring you use. Oh yes, that is another common question actually. People wonder how we get such bold colors because you know, the little stuff you buy at the grocery store, the little drippy yes. stuff, that doesn't work. So Americolor is my very favorite brand, except that I have something else. This is this is Hobby Lobby's brand and it's just as good. So you can do either one. This one I'm running really low, but I like it. So I'm trying to, trying to use it. <laughs> I don't know, oh, there we go. Okay. And so does a little bit go a long oh, way. Oh yeah, it's very potent. It's very, very, very bold. Yeah, really great colors. I'm gonna go a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix this blue and I first wanna get a piping consistency. Then I'm going to take a little bit out for my piping and then thin out the rest of it so that I'm only mixing this color once and so the colors match. Oh, good idea. <laughs> She has whipped up all of the colors here. You guys will see all of those right there. And now she's making up the black, but she says, okay, we need to talk about this. What do we need to know about the black? Okay, there is an icing consistency that is somewhere in between piping and fill icing and flood icing. I guess I keep calling it fill, but a lot of people call it flood. And it is called 20 second icing. Whoa. And what it is, is it just kind of means that if you were to take your spoon and like run through it, that it'll take about 20 seconds for it to get back to settled. Oh wow. So we might not be quite there yet. You might use it for just things that you need them to go flat, but you don't want them running off the cookie. So it's just an in-between and it's really hard for me. I'm not super good at it to find that perfect 20 second icing. And is it always with black or is this no, just, no, this, is, this just is just the a design that we need right now. I just need it. You guys are going to notice that her little cup has all different colors in it. It's because she started with the lightest color first and worked her way darker. So she didn't have to wash and rinse the Less cup every dishes. time. Do you notice the theme of the Night. Stephanie hates dishes. The least amount of dishes possible, or else I would die doing this every day. <laughs> Thank you. 
these are her piping bags. Yes, these are the bags. I don't put the icing right into the bags. As you've noticed, they are rolled up into saran wrap, plastic wrap stuff. And we are gonna put them into these piping bags. So you put in your coupler thing, put in your coupler first, and then you'll get your color. And you'll kind of twirl it around again. You're gonna put it straight in. It's just much faster than sitting and filling bags. Oh yeah. I've done that in the past. Much cleaner too. And then she just cuts off the saran wrap off the end, and then puts you on, put a on a tip. There you have it. Perfect. We'll do that four more times. So I was just over here looking at all the different things. I'm like, do you always use the same size? So what size of Yeah, one of the most common questions like people ask is what size of tip is good for piping? And I always use a two. And then for writing words, that's like a one. Sometimes you could use a two for that as well, depending on how small your writing is. She has like every shape, size. I feel a little bit like a child. We have like a little art set up here. Yes. She has a tray, I have a tray. We are going to do this. You wanna start with the Santa first? We're gonna start with the Santas because they have sprinkles on at the end and we need the whole thing to be pretty dry before we can do the end sprinkles. I'm gonna show you that and then Mindy's gonna try. Ooh. Okay, for these Santas, we're gonna do a super easy white rectangle just down the middle. That's it. Then, and that was your piping. So this is the piping. Now this is called the fill or the flood. Yes. Either one is fine. And you're just gonna put it in, fill it up there. Then I like to take a toothpick and just bring it to the edges, you know, help bring it to the edges, but not let it go over the edge. And if you see any bubbles, you can pop them. It's hard to see them, but you kind of get used to it. They'll show up. And that is what we need to start with. And then you let this set up for just a minute? Yeah. Kay. We'll let that set up and then we're going to do the same thing with red. On so both then you're going to need rectangles of red. Gotcha. What if it goes over? It's over and it's pretty right yeah, I'm a little bit carried away there. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, do two more. Oh, I have to do two more. I feel like I can do this because I do nails all the time, but cookies and nails are very different. Can I leave that while I do the next one? Yep. I like don't dare talk while I'm doing this. Next, we're gonna do red on these little Santas. So we need the red on each side, so you're basically just doing another rectangle. Get them dry and work on, see what you've got here. Okay, we're gonna put them under the fan while we work on other stuff. So that'll be good. Give one more. One more little Santa suit. Perfect. Okay, now we're doing the snowflake. Most cookies are gonna have two or three layers. You need to get that base layer down, which we were doing. And then we have a couple more layers of things on top of those. These are only gonna have two layers because we're gonna do blue on bottom and then the white snowflake design and then we'll be done. And then the Christmas trees that we're gonna do are actually just one step all at once. These are kind of like when we did like the frost, the fill on the fill and then we yeah. like played with it yeah, a little these bit. Are gonna be, the Christmas trees will be fun. Most cookies have two or three steps. As you can see, this cookie cutter, it does all these fancy shapes, but to be honest, I don't do that because once you pipe on the snowflake design, you really can never tell that you did that. I tend to just kind of go around. I'm not really following any hard edges because I just, in the end, I just don't think you're gonna even notice. This looks hard. You can do it, Mindy. So same thing, piping around the edges, fill in the middle. Then we need to get this under the fan so that we can do our snowflake design. I notice if I fill this way, you know, kind of cross, then you get too much in the middle. So when I'm doing the snowflakes, I'll kind of tend to go, there's like two spots, two spots, and two spots like that. And then just spread it out with the toothpick. Oh, that sounds easy enough. So we'll just fill these up, get them on the fan, and move on to our trees. This just goes to show you how much work and how each cookie has so many different steps. So we just did the blue. I broke one of my cookies and on the snowflakes, and I ate at the little corner that was broken. <laughs> and now we're back to the Santas. This is the 20 second frosting she was telling us about. Okay, if you remember, we had the 20 second icing and the reason I wanted it is because we're gonna make buttons and a lot of the time when you're doing like dots or any kind of dot you've got to have it settle it'll settle or you can do this and it'll settle. Those look so good though. So then that 20 second, it holds its shape, but it also doesn't- It's not just, running it's, everywhere. Yeah. Before we do Santa's black belt, these two dots are not the same size. They should be. We're just gonna put some white down the middle of these colors. Just kind of puts a little finished look on it. Then we're gonna go right over the top of it. We are gonna make a rectangle going this way. So many rectangles. So many rectangles. If you notice, we are doing piping and fill with this 
this same icing. 20 seconds. Because we needed it for the buttons anyways. It works just fine. Oh yeah, that if looks If you spread totally it good. around, it'll be fine. So there you go. We did the rest of our Santas. They're over there drying by the fan. And now we are gonna start Christmas Yay. trees. Okay, these are gonna be super cute. These are gonna be a one step cookie and you're done. Which I like is it. so fun, yeah. sort of. I mean, yeah, one layer. There's no drying before you have to wait for anything. Right, okay. Okay, we're gonna outline in white. You could do any color, obviously. If you want to do green. This is gonna be the fun part, We Mindy. just barely put the white on Are it. you excited? Still wet. I'm so excited. Okay, hold on, I have a bubble I wanna pop. Okay, so you're gonna take green fill icing. Again, you can change the color, but you need some sort of fill icing. And we are going to go like this, back and forth. Ooh. Then you're gonna take your toothpick. You're gonna start at the bottom, right in the middle, and just go straight up the middle. <gasps> I love that. Aren't they cute? Oh my they're kind of fun. gosh, they're beautiful. Then we want something that looks like lights, right? Some little Christmas lights. So I don't want them all over my floor, so we'll put them on a plate. And we're just gonna like kind of scatter these Christmas lights. Oh and honestly, gosh. this is this part, this step is not on my Instagram post of my last these are so cute. But I cute. just thought of it. I thought it'd be cute. Aren't those cute? They look so cute. And you know what's cool is the colors are not bleeding in the frosting because sometimes sprinkles yeah. do that. We just had to add sprinkles because we're working with the bands. We love our sprinkles. Okay, ready? We're going to do a pretty simple tree stump. I just like to go back and forth. It's like a little tree stump. Yeah, so I just went back and forth. Then my thing got clogged. We're going to try another one. But you can just make it super simple like that. Those are so cute. Now we're moving on to the snowflake again. So we let this dry for what, 20 minutes or so? And then we're gonna do a snowflake design. Before the middle dries, I'm going to get a little blue dot. Cute. Just put it right there. And then the design you're gonna wanna do is just these little V's, I guess you could say. These look like Elsa cookies. They are Elsa cookies. We are now back to Mr. Santa Claus. Okay guys, we're gonna hope that this is dry enough that we can apply some sprinkles. Sometimes if you apply sprinkles too early, it sticks to the whole cookie. We don't want that to happen. But we're kind of short on time, as you can see. It's 11 o'clock. Well, it's, 11, it's past 11. <laughs> The reason we did this though is so we didn't have kids running everywhere, right? So mm, it's okay. No. It's okay, we're having fun. We are gonna actually make Santa a thick buckle on his belt. Mm. So I'm switching my tip to a four. If I had a five, I might do the five, but four is fine. We're gonna hope this works out. I think what I'm gonna do, sometimes I will pipe something and then sprinkle right over it. Other times you can pipe and then you could even put some sprinkles in here and just turn it over. Oh, that's a good idea. So I think that's what I'm gonna do so that I don't completely hit the entire thing. We're gonna make a pretty thick square here. Might even go a little thicker like that, okay? That's his belt buckle. There. Oh, Santa! It's so cute. Oh my gosh, it's perfect. So yeah, I think that you can just kind of make sure you get sprinkles everywhere if that's bothering you like it is me, okay? That is so cute. Okay, this is my favorite. Just kidding, I love the tree. I don't know, I love them all. Now Steph is doing the cleanup process. You guys, can I tell you it's way more fun to make a mess at someone else's house? Yeah. Just kidding, I helped her clean up. She has to deal with all, all the mess. If you're not following Stephanie on Instagram, you need to go over and do that. Her Instagram handle is at sugarcookiesbysteph. So go check her out, give her a follow. Thank you. We're going to make a blog post. This is howwebingham.com. It's just under the blog and recipes and I will post the pictures from tonight, her recipes again. We've done it before, but we'll do it one more time with the, all of the information that you guys have wondered about. I oh. hope we answered your questions. Yeah. Seriously, this is taking her an entire night and I told her, I said, you basically did my job for me today. Thank you so okay. much. It was fun. But we got to hang I out and talk. It's like fun. This. So thank you guys. Leave a comment below for Steph what your favorite part of sugar cookies is, what your favorite thing we did tonight was, or what you learned the most. Leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. This is not a traditional Bingham vlog. You didn't see any of Brandon. You did not get chopped. Stephanie does I'm not I'm sorry, chop. I could have done that more. My mistake. <laughs> the kids were not in this, but the kids are going to eat these tomorrow, and they're going to be so they're excited. They're going to love it. Kids love them, you guys. They're great for gifts. They're great for any party. She has so many 
many tips and tricks. You guys, thank you so much for following our family and also a lot of you follow Steph too. So yes, thank you thank so much you. for following both of us. Thank you for everything you do. You show up every day and watch us. You're showing up today watching this sugar cookie tutorial and you're probably drooling at this point, but we are so grateful. Steph and I are super good friends. We've known each other for a really long time. So it's fun for us to be it able to do this so kind of fun. stuff. I got something to <laughs> We love you so much. Thanks for hanging. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye guys. Bye.